It's in the food you eat, the water you drink, and the weed you smoke, if you do that sort of thing. I'm Chef Scoobs, and today we're learning about PFAS chemicals. PFAS? PFAS? I don't know. But don't we have enough to keep us up at night? COVID, gun violence, this movie. And I know what you're thinking. How can we do this to ourselves? Humans are our own worst enemy. And this is not the first time this has happened. You cannot take a childhood classic and make it into a horror movie. It just doesn't work. And by the way, as a bonus, at the end of this video, we're going to watch the trailer to this movie because I've never seen it. In the meantime, let's learn about some PFANS. Welcome back to CBS Mornings, where we are learning more about a hidden threat to our waterways and our health. So-called forever chemicals have been widely used for decades in products like sounds cookware, really shitty. cosmetics and food packaging. And they have since leached into our water and can be found in the blood of most Americans. These chemicals have already been linked to a range of health problems, including some forms of cancer. Now, this isn't new. And like I said, I think we are our own worst enemy. It's leached into the water. It's like that whole Monsanto with the bug spray. What the hell is that called? Uh, Roundup. It's the same shit over and over again. They use these chemicals and then they leach into the water and then we're all screwed. Roxana Saberi looks now at what's being done in an effort to protect us. Nothing. On a hilltop in Maine, Songbird Farm sits silently. A shell oh. of what it was and could have been. I love how dramatic these news reporters. I could never be a news reporter because I, I couldn't keep a straight face. Like she's in the middle of the snowy, crappy place in Maine and she's trying to be all dramatic so I can win a daytime Emmy Award. All right, Welcome anyways, I'm being a little to critical. The town of our dreams. Look, this guy's got a one of those teeny weeny beanies. You guys seen that Jimmy Fallon, uh, Paul Rudd? Thing. On the street, I want a hat right now that can bring me the heat. It's a teeny weeny beanie. It's a teeny weeny beanie. It don't cover your ears because you still need to hear. It's a teeny weeny beanie. That's this guy. Look at this guy. Hey, do I look like this guy? You know, now that I think about it, do you ever look at someone and you think they look like you? Like, it's, it's hard to tell when you look at someone if they look like you or not because it's just a weird feeling. Hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove this to you. Hang on. All right, now what do you think? I think I have the general face structure like this guy, especially when I'm wearing the beanie. I have glasses that are very similar. Leave a comment below. I'm gonna even, I'm gonna purse my lips like this. I'm gonna look to the side. Leave a comment below. You let me know if I look like this guy. Anyways, where were we? Adam Nordell and his wife Johanna bought the 44 acres in 2014 to raise organic produce and a family. <laughs> now, not to stereotype, and these people are great. I'm sure they're a wonderful family and they have great intentions. But if I was starting an organic farm, or organic? If I was starting an organic farm, I think that this is like the poster family for starting an organic farm. I just think they look like organic farmers. Family. Seven years later, they learned their land was riddled with toxic chemicals called PFAS. Nice. Did you know what PFAS were? No, 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 no. I didn't know what, what, what PFAS chemicals were. He soon found out. They're a family of thousands of compounds that last so long in the environment, they're known as forever chemicals. Oh, that's wonderful. So it leaches into the ground, it gets into the water sources, and then it sits there for God knows how long. So how many generations has this been going on? Like, are we totally screwed? For decades, they've been widely used to put the non-stick in cookware and to make stain and waterproof like fabrics, firefighting foam, food packaging, even cosmetics. The toxins at Songbird Farm were traced to sludge. The solids left after wastewater is treated, spread there as fertilizer in the 1990s. <laughs> this whole idea of fertilizer. They thought they were doing a good thing. It's wastewater. They're like, you know what? We're going to recycle the wastewater. It's got some nutrients in it. We're going to spread it all over the place, all over these crops, and it's going to help our shit grow. Literally, it's going to help it grow 
and people are going to be more healthy because of organic food. And now look, good intentions gone way wrong. It contained a whole host of industrial chemicals um, that were washing out of consumer products in people's homes or that were entering the wastewater treatment district from industrial facilities. Adam says tests found their water and some crops had dangerously high levels. So did his family's blood. Oh he God! It was 250 times higher than average. Living oh my God! What? 250 times higher? This guy is like, what do you do with information like that? You get a blood test. It. I assume it's like getting some kind of diagnosis. Maybe not like a terminal illness, but something where they're like, yeah, we don't really know what's going to happen to you. That's really scary. The exposure is terrifying. I feel like I have a poorly wired time bomb inside of me. Yeah, man. That's because PFAS have been linked to health problems like low birth weight, liver damage, and some kinds of cancer. All right. In all fairness, I don't think he has to worry about low birth rate because he is, in fact, already alive. But liver damage, kidney or testicular cancer. Did you know that one in nine males will be diagnosed with testicular cancer in their lifetime? One in nine. While Maine is leading the way in identifying farmland contaminated with PFAS, a recent study estimates that sludge, like what was applied here, has also been spread on around 5% of all farmland in this country. What? 5% of all farmland? That doesn't sound like a lot percentage-wise, but if you think about like how many millions of acres of farmland there are 5% that's that's a shit ton of farmland that's contaminated with PFAS I don't even know what it means they haven't even said what the acronym means well not all <laughs> sludge contains toxins that was an epic pause moment right there even the cow disagrees toxins cattle that ate feed grown in tainted soil have been destroyed in at least 3 states the chemicals also leach into lakes, rivers, and groundwater from factories and landfills. That's so They've bad. Really contaminated fish everywhere. Climatologist Dan Brown showed us a stretch of a river near Detroit where the fish are too contaminated to eat. I mean, I wouldn't eat anything in Detroit. Detroit has got to be one of the most polluted, contaminated cities in the U.S. And I hate to say that because there's a lot of people that live there and I feel bad for them. But man, the decades of just ridiculous human behavior that's gone on in that city is out of control. I just can't imagine that there's any place that's going to be truly safe from PFAS at this point. A nice. recent analysis of freshwater fish samples collected by the EPA found PFAS are an issue in almost... What? Oh my God. Look at this map. It's everywhere in the United States, except for Nevada. There is no trace of PFAS in Nevada. So you know what? Let's all move to Nevada. Is there anything good in Nevada? Vegas. Vegas is a disaster. How can there be no PFAS in the Vegas area? Vegas is a large metro city. I don't believe this map. It's a bunch of nonsense. I don't buy it. Every state. They're so pervasive, studies have shown more than 95% of Americans now have detectable <laughs> levels in their blood. You see what I mean? Keeping you up at night. I don't want to know this. And I'm sorry I'm sharing it with you. I literally, I, I, I read this the other day and I had to find out more about this. But this is terrible. 97% of Americans have detectable levels of PFAS in their blood. And now for the first time, the EPA is proposing strict regulations for the first PFAS time in drinking water, more than 90% lower than previous recommended levels. I was very pleased to see this. Elsie Sunderland studies PFAS pollution at her Harvard University lab. And this is the problem with the EPA, the FDA, all these freaking government entities. She just said that these new restrictions are lowering the acceptable levels by 90% from the previous accepted. So a while ago, they were like, yeah, you can have X number per million. And now they're like, no, 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 we have to we have to reduce that by 90%. It's like, what? how long has this been going on before you decided to do this? How would you characterize the federal government's approach toward PFAS? I Terrible. I would call it ambitious, yet fragmented. 
you know, if, if we're That's really nice concerned about it. PFAS and our everyday exposure, um, we should be proactive and we should be banning these chemicals from non-essential uses. In an email to CBS News, the FDA says it tests products in the U.S.'s general oh, here we food go. supply, which is among the safest in the world. Oh, here we go. The FDA, uh, they never steer us wrong. The FDA, it's among the safest in the world. We, we test everything. Yeah. Okay, guys. The agency says very few of those products have detectable levels of PFAS, uh -huh. and those that do are low. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry, so I'm going to go eat some food, hopefully not contaminated with PFAS. But before I do, I promised you we'd watch the trailer of this Winnie the Pooh horror movie. So here we go. You know, you're the first person I ever shown this place to. And why am I so special? Because soon we'll be Christopher and Mary Robin. You should be close now. It's Christopher We're Robin. We're going to find them. We will. Pooh, Piglet, Eeyore. We were friends for many years. <laughs> no, that doesn't look good. Christopher. Oh, they Eeyore. killed Eeyore. Now. <laughs> Eeyore really fucking died. Her, okay? Oh, shit. Christopher, you messed up bad, bro. Oh, they're coming for you. Winnie the Pooh just stabbed some chick. We need to go. There's the flowers there. There's someone else upstairs. Pooh Bear's pissed. They stole all his honey. <laughs> he's got like tusks. What the hell? He's got like warthog tusks. Too late, Christopher. Pooh Bear just wanted to play and you left him. <laughs> Why? It's already been rated one of the worst movies of 2023. I will not see this movie. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you soon. Okay, bye.